I'm considering switching from my Sony a7R 3 to the new Canon R5. So far I've put the two cameras head to head with portrait photography and now I'm testing two other types of photography that I love which is travel photography and landscape photography. So I'm going to be taking this on a trip. I've packed up my bag with all of the necessary items and even one photography item that I didn't think I could ever possibly travel with in my bag. But first I have to tell you, you're probably thinking about selling some gear too because the only good thing about 2020 so far is the amazing cameras that are coming out. And the only way that I sell my used gear is through KEH because they make selling your gear fast, easy, and safe. If you value your time and your sanity, you really wanna use KEH to sell your gear. And if you're buying gear from them, they have over 60,000 items in their store and you can get 5% off with our coupon code TNC20. So use the link down below in our description to go to KEH.com and don't forget to use our coupon code. All right, let's unpack my bag and I'll show you everything that I'm bringing on our amazing trip. I'm so excited. So the first thing I have is my Gitzo tripod. This is the number one item I tell myself I don't need it because I don't want to carry it. And then to go along with my tripod, I have an ND filter for long exposures. Now my main lens, I just keep on my camera and I carry my camera over my shoulder and that's a 24 to 70 f2.8. This is my favorite lens, my around town lens. It's great for portraits. I'll be using it for landscapes as well. I've got the 15 to 35. This is good if you're in a tight area, narrow streets. I'm excited about this little guy. This is a 70 to 200, and I'm gonna be using this for landscapes because sometimes you wanna zoom in and get those details. The item I did not think I could ever easily bring with me on a trip is a wildlife lens. This is the Canon 600 millimeter F11 lens, and I've been so impressed with these lenses. I never thought it'd be possible that a fixed aperture lens at F11 could be good. In fact, I assume they would just be trash, but they are amazing so far. Oh, also another part of this experiment is I'm making Tony shoot with all of my old gear. Sorry, Tony. What are you bringing with you? Well, I just want to point out when you're traveling, you sometimes want a really compact camera and Sony happens to have a full frame, extremely compact camera and Sam Yang is making these extremely compact prime lenses. And once you buy into an infrastructure, it helps to be able to buy other cameras and lenses. And it's just nice that Sony has something so compact that I could switch to. But for the sake of this comparison, I want to be on par with you. So I'm bringing, well, I'm bringing the a7R4. You want me to bring the a7R3, but everybody's like, that camera's three years old. And this is the camera I would normally shoot with. I have the 24-70 to f2.8 on there. Let's open my bag. I got the Cecilia bag here. I got my MacBook Pro in here. I got my Mavic Air 2 drone, but not a 600 millimeter lens because uh -huh. Sony has nothing nearly as compact. Instead, what I bring is a 70-200 and their two times teleconverter, but this is much bigger than your 70 to 200. There's something in here that I have to bring that Chelsea does not have to bring, and it is sensor cleaning tools. Because the shutter does not close over the sensor on just about any of the Sonys, I get dust 100% of the time. And the first thing I have to do in the morning is to clean the sensor. And then by the afternoon, I'll probably have dust. How dare you go up against me like that? Team Sony! Good thing the hotel lobby has a wide variety of coats for you to choose from. <laughs> All right, yep, that's our garage in our house. It's 2020, so I'm doing a staycation instead of a vacation. So let's explore Connecticut. I tend to overlook just how beautiful my own state is, which is a mistake because the best photos of places are usually taken by people who live there. Returning to a spot many times ensures better photos. So as a lot of commenters have said, not everybody can afford to be switching camera systems every 28 seconds. <laughs> Explain that. Why are you switching cameras so often? Is it just clickbait? No, I actually don't switch camera systems that often. I mean, 
these two were closer together than usual. I don't enjoy switching camera systems, but I do feel like if I have the opportunity, I should do it because I review cameras. And we get just about every single camera in for our review, so if I like it, why not keep it? I understand their point of view that they're not going to do that, but this is my job. We're late. The sun is setting. <laughs> we should have been there a little earlier. I do have the home advantage of knowing that this is the type of place where they kick people out. <laughs> so I'm gonna like hurry and try to get a picture quickly, not just because the sun is setting quickly, but because the people, they don't want me here. Let's go to I am really bad at tripods. <laughs> Touch to focus. Let's try 30 second exposure. Don't long exposures make you be like, all right, what's coming? I gotta wait 30 seconds. It's like the longest 30 seconds of my life. Oh, you got an ND filter on there? Yeah. Do you remember going out and doing night photography with me and like a, I could not handle waiting? <laughs> yeah. 30 <laughs> seconds is an impossible amount of time. The longest 30 seconds. That's what my long exposure photography book is titled. It's definitely interesting with the ND filter. And you know what? My telephoto lens would actually be better for this stuff, so I'm gonna run and switch really quickly. Oh, I didn't bring it. You could use the Sony. That's against the rules. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the sun's getting really pretty. Sunset's the best, it's ever changing. going so fast. Whoa, whole different feel. Why did you switch to using the LCD over the EVF? Because it's easier to touch to focus. Mm. Like sometimes it'll just grab onto something I don't really want. But if you touch to focus, it seems to know what you want. Wow, it's just like, it just disappears. Do you see it? Even though Tony cleaned the sensor on the Sony before we left, it has sensor dust already. The Canon's new, but it hasn't had any sensor dust yet, even at high f-stops. Yeah, that is a lesson. You do always have to bring your heavy gear. Oh, why I keep telling myself. What do you say to people who say that landscape photography is like peaceful and relaxing and you can just take your time? I mean, sometimes you can, but if you don't plan like me, then you end up just chasing the sun. After the sunset, during the blue hour, we went to downtown Niantic, one of our favorite little spots on the shoreline. I'm getting some B-roll using the R5 so get, I can get a feel for the video capabilities because I do sometimes take B-roll clips when we're traveling. Wait, does this have really good video stabilization or something? Yeah, it has amazing video stabilization. I was, thought I was got like really good at being still. <laughs> The next evening, we headed to Devil's Hopyard State Park in East Haddam to create long exposures of the waterfalls. A season of drought has reduced the drama of Chapman Falls, but a long exposure can help bring more interest to the photo. The R5 is still pretty new to me, but I find the cameras really intuitive. I had no trouble finding anything in the menus, no trouble finding any of the functions on the camera, and overall it kind of felt like I've been living with it for much longer than I have. Um, Image-wise, so far, the Sony and the Canon are matched, which is, I think, a win for the Sony because it's an older camera and it's still keeping up with cameras that are coming out in 2020. 
Um, one downside to the Sony that I noticed is that all of my pictures I took with the Sony had sensor dust in it. That could be prevented by cleaning your sensor. It can also be eliminated in editing, which I had to do. But it's a bit of a pain in the butt and I like that the R5 has the shutter locked down right in front of the sensor every time you take off the lens. That means I don't have to worry about cleaning my sensor and I don't have to worry about editing out sensor dust. I don't think I got good pictures, but this was better than not taking pictures. So. The next morning we headed to Rocky Neck State Park in East Lyme. I, I made a mistake. Please don't judge me. I forgot to charge my battery and I have one bar left. The thing is I haven't done that much shooting since I put in a fresh battery. I maybe took a hundred pictures, a couple long exposures and maybe five minutes worth of 4K video and my, my battery is drained. So I'll have to do a proper test to see how long a battery actually lasts in the R5 but I'm getting the feeling right now that it's not very long and that I should maybe travel with a couple extra batteries in the future. So pretty. Oh, I'm getting a blinking battery. Okay, I better get the shots that I want. I'm a hot mess today. <laughs> Just trying to find my mask. I don't know what pocket it's in. I found this one instead. I don't know where this came from. Oh, here it is. Bullet. Oh, you have a fancy new aperture mask now for sale in Northern Dakota. <laughs> it's called Fashion. Look it up. I'm gonna try that setup, Joe. Yeah, I don't. Well, I'm seeing if a long exposure will do anything, but I don't think that it will. So I'm wondering if it's worth setting up right now. This camera is actually flake proof because I can just charge it in the car. We still have about an hour until sunset so I can let this charge. Let's go get my drone shots first. Okay. It's actually illegal for me to operate a drone in a Connecticut state park, but they don't control the airspace. So I went to public property just outside the park to get these shots. Okay, Tony got his drone shots while I charged my camera. I have two bars now, so let's try it again. Gosh, I'm forgetful. Brought a wide angle lens and I brought a 70 to 200. I was expecting to get landscapes, but there's, there's actually some really beautiful birds here. So there's some cormorants right here and um, some egrets over here. And luckily I have that really light 600 millimeter lens in my bag, I, I think. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna snap that on and get some wildlife shots. I mean, I've forgotten everything else, so so why not forget the lens? Are you kidding me? I did forget the lens. Wait, no way. How big is your bag? Maybe you lose a 600 millimeter lens. No, it? look. I mean, that's kind of the amazing thing. Like, if you lose your 600 millimeter lens in your bag, that's saying something. I mean, it's saying something about me a little bit too. Let's see if those birds are still there. Autofocus seems to work really well for wildlife. I'm going to do a more in-depth wildlife review, but just shooting now, I'm realizing that this mirrorless camera has the same problem I have with a lot of mirrorless cameras when shooting wildlife, and that's that you get this lagginess when you're trying to look through the viewfinder and focus. It was grabbing focus and everything seems to be in focus, but it has this unnaturalness to it um, compared to the D850, which I usually shoot with for wildlife. The next morning, we traveled up the Connecticut shoreline for pictures of boats and lighthouses. We got a lot of that going on. I came down here hoping I'd get those morning steam that's sometimes rising from the water that makes the scene really beautiful, but it's not here.
It's like the most peaceful scene, but there's a, a leaf blower going. Um, we're gonna come back another time because I like this spot, but the light isn't perfect. Oh, also, I have to take <laughs> Madeline to school. That's not a realistic travel scenario. <laughs> I thought that the 70 to 200 would be enough reach for me to get photos of these lighthouses, but I think I'm gonna need the 600 millimeter. So it's not just a good lens to have for wildlife, it also works well for landscapes. Here's the same shot at 70 millimeters, 100, 135, and 200. And you can see you don't get the same look. Let's compare it to a smartphone zoomed all the way in. There really are reasons to buy a real camera. Well, this is coming to an abrupt end because even though I charged my battery, it ran out already and I did not bring a second one. So now I know if I'm shooting with this camera, I need to bring multiple batteries. Let's get back to my room and check out the pictures and wrap this up. I'm back in my room reviewing my pictures and have come to my final conclusion for travel and landscape photos. My Sony a7R 3 wins in one category far and away, and that's battery life. That's something that Sony worked on and they succeeded. I never have a problem with my Sony batteries not lasting anymore. For the image quality, the images look almost identical. Where the R5 starts to pull ahead is in low light situations because the Sony image stabilization is nowhere near as good. And if you're wondering when you might use that, I use that in the waterfall I handheld for one second. I use that in Niantic on the that beautiful dock I handheld to get some motion in the leaves. How many places have you been on your vacation where you go to a tourist attraction and they don't allow tripods? If it's a low light situation like St. Peter's Basilica, which I've been to, I could actually get a cleaner shot with the Canon R5 because the Im image stabilization is good enough where I can handhold for about a second. That goes for video too. The Canon video stabilization is way better than my Sony and it also has the flip screen. So if I wanna film myself, I can do that. That's not an option with my a7R 3 That means unless you're planning on getting really long exposures, you might not have to bring a tripod anymore on your vacation if you have the Canon R5. One thing I was really impressed by, that Canon 600 millimeter lens is light and easy to carry, which means it opened up so many more opportunities for my pictures for me. I couldn't get closer to the lighthouse unless I had a boat. Couldn't walk on the water, and but I had the 600 millimeter lens and it allowed me to get a shot I couldn't have gotten with my a7R 3 One problem I have with my Sony a7R 3 is that I usually end up with sensor dust. And in fact, I can tell when a lot of people shoot with a Sony because I can see their sensor dust too. Uh, the R5 has the shutter go over the sensor when you take your lenses off, if you turn the camera off first. And so that prevents dust from flying in on your sensor. That's a nice feature, I like it. I don't like cleaning my sensor. And so that makes my life a little bit easier. So I'd say for landscape and travel, you really can't go wrong with the Canon R5. If you were thinking about getting one anyway, go ahead, do it. I highly recommend it. And I really recommend that 600 millimeter F11 lens. If you're not sure about switching yet or switching from Sony to Canon like I might be doing, I gotta say, I don't think you're gonna notice a whole big difference with the image quality unless you have to handhold for an extended time. Um, if you think that image stabilization is really gonna help you out or if you couldn't otherwise afford long glass like the 600 eight or 800 millimeter lenses. Other than that, I don't think you're gonna notice a difference with the image quality. Um, if you decide to switch, I recommend going to KEH. That's where I sell all of my gear because they make it so easy to do. If you wanna buy used gear, you can use the coupon code TNC20 to get 5% off. But thanks KEH for making my gear selling and buying a much easier and for making this video possible. My next video with the Canon R5 will be testing it with wild 
life. I've got to see if this, this can replace my D850 for the Nikon and if it's worth replacing my A7R 3 again. So stay tuned, I'll be using a few lenses, checking the autofocus, everything like that. Thanks. For those of you wondering about the Sony A7S III that we filmed this with, it's been fantastic. But those high quality 4K at 60 frames per second files are just huge and our MacBook Pros can't edit them in real time. So we lost a full day rendering proxies for those files. 